The Phantom Creeps, 1939, directed by Fred Beebe, starring Bella Lugosi, Robert Kent, and Dorothy Arnold. The diabolical Dr. Zorka schemes to take over the world with his arsenal of ghoulish gadgets. Can the dashing Captain West and plucky journalist Gene Drew foil his plans before it's too late? Before televisions became commonplace in households in the 50s and the 60s, movie theaters frequently screened film serials before their feature presentation. These proto-shows carried a lot of attributes that television programs would later adopt, including a chaptered format, shorter runtime, a recap of previous events, a cliffhanger at the end of each episode, and a weekly release schedule. You can watch a serial in a single sitting, but they can run up for up to four hours in the process. It's far more manageable and entertaining to watch an episode a day, especially with the ridiculous cliffhangers each episode ends with. This is an unflinchingly action-packed serial. Every chapter has something going on. Fights, gunfights, car chases, train wrecks, plane crashes, trains hitting cars, boats, planes bombing boats, even planes bombing towns. It's hard to tell who's who sometimes, though. Everyone on screen is wearing the same fedora and coat. The strangest thing is people frequently get shot during these gunfights and then just brush themselves off and walk it off. I guess gunshots weren't a big deal in the 30s. They seem more like a nuisance than anything. The cast consists entirely of archetypal characters. Things don't get developed too much. Bela Lugosi chews the scenery as Dr. Zorka, but isn't given much backstory aside from being a mad scientist. Robert Kent plays the square-jawed Captain Robert West, one of the G-Men tasked with bringing Dr. Zorka down. That's basically all there is to him. He sort of blends in with the rest of the fedoras. Dorothy Arnold plays the plucky journalist Gene Drew, who does get a chance to be more than just a damsel in distress. Jack C. Smith plays Monk, Dr. Zorka's involuntarily loyal assistant and henchman. Rounding out the cast are a couple of foreign spies that all talk like Edward G. Robinson impersonators. I have no idea why they didn't just make them members of the mob. It's safe to say Zorka's inventions would have benefited them. The robot is one of the real stars of the serial, though, with an incredible design that looks phenomenal whenever on screen. And yes, this is the same robot that Rob Zombie features in his concerts and music videos. The rest of Zorka's inventions are delightfully pulpy as well, including a belt that can render him invisible and robotic spiders that can put someone in suspended animation or kill them. Finally, the miniature work in this serial is adorable. It really does look like they used toy planes and cars for some shots. Overall, I'd call this one a pulpy serial that might not have much in the way of story, but does stay entertaining enough to enjoy in its entirety. Those are my thoughts on this series. Hopefully you'll be able to figure out if it's for you based on what I said. I will always be on the hunt for more obscure sci-fi and horror shows. Feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try to track a copy down. Until next time, fellow couch potatoes.